When you're trying to calculate a final date, perhaps working with projects, you need to use a function called Workday if you want to be able to account for weekends and possibly holidays. And like its companion Network Days, we also have the capability here of adjusting this to different cultures in the world where the weekends might not be Saturdays and Sundays, they could be Fridays and Saturdays, and some other combinations as well. So, simple example here of a project that begins on May 6th, 2013, it's 60 days, if we just do simple math here, a starting date plus a 60-day length will give us a completion date of July 5th. But let's say we don't work weekends. So we'll use the function called Workday. And I'll first use it in its standard way. Notice that its companion is called Workday International. So Workday simply uses standard American type, English type weekends. Left parenthesis here. Here's our starting date, comma. Here's the number of days, and for the moment, we're ignoring the holidays. But we get an answer of July 29th. And if we do want to account for the holidays, I'll simply copy this function down here, then make an adjustment here to include, or better yet, to not include the holidays. So we either highlight the relevant cells or enough cells around them to get the idea across. It's going to be somewhere in those. Enter. And so the actual project ending date will be the 31st, because we do have a couple of holidays within that time frame. If we use the example here, we can essentially just copy this downward. We'll get an answer here. Now, we would have to make an adjustment, possibly. No, nope, we're all set here as well, too. Now, what if we wanted to account for different weekend settings or different days of the week kinds of settings? Built into Excel, but by way of a different function called Workday International, we possibly will include a different weekend set. So let's take a look at that. Equal Workday. As we start to type it, immediately we see the other choice. Workday International, tab that into place. Here's our starting date, comma. Here's the number of days, comma. But what kind of weekend do we have? And you'll see all the, the two-day consecutive combinations listed here. Some parts of the world, it's Friday and Saturday that's the weekend. And maybe based on the working environment here, and you're not necessarily thinking international, but maybe you've got one day only. So each day of the week is represented here as an option as well, too. So 17 different choices there. And this doesn't necessarily mean we'll get a different answer as we, if we were to compare this with the simple workday function, but sometimes, of course, we would. So if we're using this option right here, Friday, Saturday, we can either type the seven or just tab that into place. And if we don't want to include the holidays, of course, we'll highlight what we believe to be the relevant cells. That's probably good enough. And enter, and we get an answer there. But a different set of weekends. If we use the regular workday function here, we might or might not get the same answer. This time we've got this date, comma, the number of working days, comma, and the relevant holidays. So we might come up with the same answer or we might not. It depends upon how the comparison between a standard American type weekend, which is Saturday, Sunday, versus the international setting that I used here for Friday, Saturday. So with the Workday function and also its companion, Network Days, we do have the option in these calculations to include different kinds of weekends. But both functions are valuable in the sense that we do need to count days across multiple weeks and months and not include holidays and or weekends.